I, I want to congratulate Ann Turley and uh, quoting the U.S. rule book, rule number 452, <laughs> I'm going to take my 40 half minutes for this speech plus or take uh, 10 seconds. <laughs> and uh, Ricky Harris, uh, I was at that uh, seminar in uh, California and I'd uh, like to report I still have my energy balls. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, interestingly, at least to me, uh, seven families started that team, and there were three Olympians out of that team. Nancy Squire Peltz, who competed in four Olympics in speed skating. David, of course, in two Olympics as a figure skater. And the third Olympian was Mark Connor, Olympic gold medals in gymnastics. So kind of always a kind of an interesting thing. So um, he also uh, took a stab at pair skating. He skated with uh, Lynn Holly Johnson, and he also skated with another very special lady who's in the room, Lori Parker. They placed, they placed second in sectionals in the 1970, not as pair, 71, something like that. So. Well, in all seriousness, um, his, his accomplishments in his career were extremely important, but I think that it's his character that I will always remember personally. The Rocky persona became his motivation, connected him to a fan base that recognized his determination to never give up. He always got up. During his career, he overcame many obstacles, both mental and physical. One, however, was insurmountable, and as my mother pointed out one day, very tough. He was never going to be a world champion because <laughs> he didn't make his bed. <laughs> know something? Dana, he made his bed every day after that. <laughs> well, David led by example. Trained hard at eight, right? Was encouraging to the younger skaters. His sportsmanship to his better, better fellow competitors was legendary. Scott knows it better. The one thing that I, I about Scott and my brother, as, as much as they went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, my brother respected Scott, loved Scott. When, in fact, um, when Scott's father passed away, my brother got up in the morning, jumped in the car, drove the eight hours, going green, be there, shake your hand, give you a hug, came home. And, uh, My brother to be there for you, and uh, you know our family's always respected you as a champion, and uh, your great friend. Thank you. So now I'm going to get a little bit less. No, I'm going to get more serious. Um, I think David's biggest accomplishments, though, probably he would agree with me, is that his greatest, proudest. Achievement was his two boys, Michael and Christopher, his loving father, very caring father, his great son, great brother, coach, mentor. Sum up, David is a man that can be summed up with a single quote. The most important thing is always to remember to respect the sport. At the end of the day, the sport has given you more than you can ever give back. My brother, David Santee.
a Cubs fan growing up, we've learned to be patient and wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that I made the Hall of Fame before the Cubs win. <laughs> for the whole ice dance comment. My only problem with ice dance, and I would like to say I took dance lessons from Doreen Denning myself, the one who's in the Colorado Springs, and the woman is a saint, because I was out there against my will. I was doing four hours of compulsory figures, another two to three hours of freestyle, and they wanted me to do patterns. So I decided I'm gonna do patterns my own way. And Doreen would give me these lessons, and she would say, Baby, you're free skating your dances. And I'm like, Hell yeah! <laughs> That's the best compliment you can give me. So I give her a lot of credit for hanging in there. Number two, speed skating. Love the speed skate. It was fun. I had one problem with speed skating. I wasn't fast. That's a problem. So when I was thinking about what I wanted to say here, I, I wrote, well, first of all, this is the sign of the times. Look at the cards, everybody. <laughs> Couldn't make those any bigger if I tried. So I wrote on this card, the reason that I am here. The problem is I forgot what I'm going to say. <laughs> so the reason I'm here is because there's not one person in this room that hasn't committed a lifetime to figure skating. We all have. And as my brother said, you know, one of the most important things that I try to stress when I'm coaching, and you know, it's, I have the greatest job in the world. I get to, it's a different story every 20 minutes. Uh, I got a, a, I work for a great a park district, I'll get to that a little bit later. But I get, I get to teach these guys, you know, good, positive things, you know, respect the sport. We have three rules at the rink. Don't lie, be on time, respect the sport and those who are in it. And if you follow those rules, then you'll, you'll get nothing but positive from, from us. We have a great atmosphere and we work hard at it. And I, I'm proud to say that a lot of people in this room have graced our rink, have been there for some of the different events, and uh, our rink is better off for, for knowing you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what got me to this point, and really in a lot of ways as a four foot eight male figure skater, 86 pounds as a freshman, you have, you have to have a lot of determination and desire to get through because those hockey players aren't exactly complimentary and positive when you're getting off the ice after you know, your session. So you learn to be a little, you know, you learn to be a little tough. So and, I, and now maybe you know, I appreciate it. You know, it kind of helped me be who I am. There are other things that I would like to talk about about maybe what made me a little bit of, you know, who I became on the ice. I want to talk about people that really inspired me. John Misha Petkovich, the Death Drop, inspired me. I mean, I I think I had a pretty good Death Drop by the end of the. Day. But it was just because I looked at John Misha Peck and I said, he is just, that is just awesome. I want to learn that. And I went home and learned it. Gary Visconti, the essence of career. <laughs> from the first time I, I saw him skate until talking to him yesterday, he's class personified. Gary, thank you for just inspiring me to get to this point. Richard Dwyer. I mean, there's nothing more to say. This, this man knows everybody's name. He has a good thing to say to everyone all the time. He and someone else who I'll talk about in a minute are the best ambassadors of our school. I mean, let's face it, 
you know, I, I actually stole their music one year when I was competing you know, on the world team, and I stole their music because I just thought they were the greatest thing ever. So, I mean, you just, I mean, style, just everything, and they were, they were, they were it. So, finally, there's uh, one of the greatest men that I've ever had the good fortune to get to know, to love, Scott Hamilton. Say it mildly, the respect that I have for you is through the roof. The only thing I probably love more than being a friend of yours and being a competitor of yours is Chicago Blackhawks. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get the Blackhawks in somewhere. Come on. <laughs> Scott, you are simply the greatest ambassador in figure skating. And I, I treasure your friendship competitive nature, you know, the only difference, I mean, it was close in 1981, it was so close. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to skate after Scott, and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> skating last in Hartford, yeah, home country, skating after Scott, a little standing ovation, you know, five minutes, no, no problem. This. So, you know, I skate onto the ice, and then, you know, the fans, like, stand up, and I said this, you know, one time ago. I saw the standing ovation, I'm like, that's good enough for me, I want to get off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it was a, it, one of the greatest moments of our lives to stand on the podium together. He certainly has done nothing but uh, distinguish our sport since then, so thank you. <laughs> so, you know, I really don't talk much about the whole Rocky thing. I can't watch the movie, that's for sure. You already saw me cry a couple times today, so I certainly can't watch that movie. But what it meant to me it was very simple. I saw the movie, I was going through a tough time, you know, with just confidence and not feeling that great about myself. And like the message I got was you can be a champion despite the number. And that is the, the message I try to give to our skaters every day. If you give it your best shot, you're a champion. And, and I think that's just a great message. So that's the inspiration of Rocky for me. I want to thank the, the coaches that helped me through the years. Special mention to Nora and Michael Kirby, they started me. Their atmosphere at the Michael Kirby Skating School is the reason that everybody loves skating and, and had fun. And, and again, I try to bring that to the rink every day, so thank you, Kirby's. I took from Ruben Huron for seven years. He gave me uh, some not so good things, but a lot of very good things. Uh, certainly figure technique was good. Um, you know, I just learned a lot there. Um, as Scott was saying, not, not the most uh, balletic skater, and I got to salute one of my uh, coaches, a ballet teacher, Vicki Thompson, who just had the toughest job in the world to try to make me look something decent. Because let's face it, I wanted to get from point A to point B as fast as possible and all this other stuff. Yeah, forget it. So I give her a lot of credit. I'd like to thank Carlo and Krista Doss, who I finished my amateur career with. And lastly, I'd like to thank Abby and Mary, who taught me everything. On and off the ice, I mean, I grew into a man while I was uh, taken from Evie and Mary. Mary just gave me so much, like, encouragement. And Evie, you know, we, we kind of feared Evie a little bit, right, Sammy? But, you know, and that was good of him, because he just wanted to make sure he towed the line. But I can tell you one Evie story. So one year, Evie decided, because I always did a lot of training, you know, I could skate the rocks, so I didn't do a lot of offense training. So one year, he said, you know, I'm going to get all the skaters to run through the golf course in Jamesville. It's about a mile there problem was, Evie had this nice gold Cadillac, and he says, I'm going to drive the car and make sure you guys do your thing. problem was, he went in front of us. So he went straight through the golf course, halfway through. Jimmy, I, I don't know how we had money, I don't know, but Jimmy and I made a left and went to Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> problem was is that Evie forgot something in the ring, doubled back, and went right by Dairy Queen, and there we were, enjoying our whatever it was we had. So they, were, they were amazing to me. I want to just thank U.S. Figure Skating officials that I've had the pleasure to work with through these last 10 or 11 years. Uh, I want to thank Sam because Sam and I go way back, as I said. Um, I'm sure we got into a little trouble at Randhurst, but uh, probably more trouble with Jimmy than me. I was, I was the good son. <laughs> I want to thank my club, the Chicago Figure Skating Club. They made me an honorary lifetime member several years ago, and I value that. The Page Figure Skating Club and the Seraphins have been good to me through the years. Um, of course, uh, my employer, the Park Ridge Park District, I'm the director of skating, and they treat me like gold there. They just pretty much 
So for me, everything even just a little message there that's typical of what they do for me. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to my Olympic Tech panel, Gail Tanger, who again is just somebody that loves figure skating so much, and she gives everything to the sport. And how can you not admire somebody like that? My buddy Troy Goldstein, who, as we know, everything is the best, right? Best in New York, best hamburger in New York, but best pizza in New York. <laughs> Darn that Corey Schneider, I hate him. <laughs> That's a goalie that, that for his team. The Devils, him, he has to have like 10 teams because like his team don't win, so therefore, you know, I got to have that team. I tell you what, I'm going to offer up the bandwagon for the Blackhawks. Sorry, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Peter Kane, I don't know if Peter Kane's here, but Peter's a good friend. And He's always got a smile on his face and appreciate everything he's done. A few other people have been very important in my life. Um, Ed Mann has been a good friend. Uh, his son is my assistant coach. Um, Ed has always been there for me for a long time, and I appreciate that. Another woman I, I need to thank is Nancy Mitchell, who raised money for me to compete in 1980, which, you know, those days was tough. I want to thank the students that I've had the pleasure to work with through the years. Um, like, it's not a job. It's, uh, you know, I mean, figure skating has just given me so much. You know, as my brother said, I can never always give back as much as it's given me. And finally, okay, here we go. So I want to thank my family. So a note about the sand teams. This may come as a surprise, but we kind of run in packs. You know, we, we, we show up in a big way. There's kind of no halfway with us. You know, where people say that we can be emotional. I don't know about that. Um, but, I believe that we are inclusive, like when we know you, you're part of our family. Scott, you're part of our family. Brian Brown is part of our family. John Coffin is not part of our family. Rocky Lee Baker is part of our family. Um, we're in a big family, you know, the dinners are getting more expensive, aren't they, Grandma? <laughs> <laughs> I just think that, you know, the, the camaraderie that you get in figure skating, it's an individual sport, but we all go through this and we all share it. And I just feel like, that's been one of the greatest gifts that our family has amongst each other. We're close, we love each other, we support each other, and we're there. I mean, we're here in a big way. So, having said that, I want to just say a brief word about just a few of my family members. Uh, first of all, Jordan, Mann, and Megan Hyde, who are Jordan's my unofficial third son. And Megan, I was on the panel when she won nationals in 2006. And there's just no finer pair of people that, that I mean, I just. I, I'm just a, I'm honored to be part of your relationship, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jordan, Jordan is such a big heart, and he's gonna, he, he is just, I, I didn't want to get started with him, so I'm not gonna talk about him. <laughs> um, my nephew Ryan skates with me. Um, he's, he's his father's son in some ways, and he's his own man in a lot of ways. And, you know, it's a, it's a joy to part of your daily growth. I want to thank my Aunt Pat and I, I believe, who I lived with when I was in Gainesville. Again, there's a lot of things going on, um, but they, they did a lot for me. I want to thank my ex-wife, Ingrid, who uh, uh, obviously we, we raised two great boys for a lot of years. We worked together. We have, we have a great divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank my sons. My son, Christopher, is an analytical scientist, so when you talk to him, good luck. He speaks in a lot of big words and he speaks fast. <laughs> but, you know, I couldn't ask for, for a more supportive son. He's, he just he wants to do the right thing, and I feel good about, you know, my, uh, my guidance and, you know, whenever I talk to him and, and see where he's coming. My, my younger son, Michael, second lieutenant, Michael Santee of your United States Army. <laughs> New bride, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is Mike is quite an interesting individual. Mike lives life at a little different speed than the, the rest of us. Mike's concept of time is not too good, which is amazing since he's in the army. So I'm just wondering how that's going to work out. But uh, Mike went through a lot with uh, having he had a, a concussion that forced him from uh, he was playing hockey at, at army and uh, he had to retire after two years. But he's He's made it into a positive. He has formed the uh, can, can uh, recover concussion uh, network, which you can find online. 
and um, I'm proud of you. And finally, uh, my parents who gave everything for James and myself to be, uh, you know, the best that we could be. My dad taught me to just give a good effort and whatever happens, happens. And my mom, she's a synchro judge. <laughs> and she had a lifetime, she loves skating, and she's a lifer. And you can find her all over Chicago and helping synchro teams because that's the passion she has for skating. She gave that to us, and to that mom and that kid. And Grandpa, just one more thing. Appreciate everything you've done. You're my role model. And uh, last but not least, my brother. So, James. We should cut your hair. <laughs> 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 I only really want to say one thing. I love you. And thank you all. And good morning. <laughs> Today's formal 